Hey guys, how's it going? Tez back again with another episode of the AC Milan Career Mode. It's episode number 32 and we're into this one on the back with some particularly good form yesterday. If you missed the video, there's a link as an annotation in the bottom left hand side of your screen to take you to it. I won't spore, spoil any of the score lines, but we are in pretty good form right now. Coming into this game against Sampdoria, fifth in the league as you can see. Actually, we've dropped to sixth now. The game, uh, Roma, as you can see, have played one more now. So uh, they've moved up above us, but we were fifth coming into this before uh, that Roma game. So we're hoping to maintain our good run of form here. If we can pick up a win against Sampdoria, that would be particularly pleasing. We get off to a wonderful start. Mario Balotelli makes no mistakes with that finish. Really, really emphatic strike right into that top right-hand corner. He has every right to do his trademark celebration there. He is the man right now in fantastic goal-scoring form for us at this particular time of the season. But Sampdoria are playing some really nice football there. Cheeky little back heel, good save from the goalkeeper. And Abate dawdles on the ball and Guita we have to rely on him yet again to dive down to smother the ball at the feet of the attacker to make sure Sampdoria don't get themselves back into it but they were going to have another chance here from a headed corner but the chance really wasn't that aggressive and uh, it was just a tame header for, in the end from uh, from their attacker but they weren't going to stop coming forward not really too sure what was going on with the defenders there squares the ball into the middle decent effort this time and unfortunately not quite got as much accuracy as uh, previous shots and they slice it past that far post and we live to fight another day so we're on the attack again coming towards half time Sabate breaking into the box and again not quite as accurate as perhaps it could have been Abate's had a decent run so far he's provided quite a few goals as well as Balotelli scoring some so uh, we definitely are improving as a side right now but not really too sure what the defence was playing out there. If you uh, if you have a look at the replay and or just go back and have a look at that quick chance. Once the the initial header is saved or the initial chance is saved, the defender you would like to think is going to pr press the ball and go to clear it. Actually just stands there and waves his arm in the air. Watch him there. Just stands there, waves his arm in the air, doesn't really press the ball and make any sort of you know, aggressive movement, attacking movement towards it to, to make the uh, the move to clear it. And uh, they just take advantage. There's a cheeky little diving header and they find themselves back in the game. And then just after half time, a cheeky little back heel this time. Second of the game that we've seen in these highlights so far actually leads to them taking a 2-1 lead. Really tidy slotted finish underneath the goalkeeper. We get a free kick here just a few minutes later. Benyak goes down, wins the free kick. So we're going to let him take it as opposed to uh, Kazuki Honda. Of course, it is actually on the the, uh, the side that would favour the, uh, the Japanese star, but we're actually going to give it to Benyat. Does have a good free kick on him himself and whips it towards that top right hand corner. But unfortunately, the cost of the goalkeeper gets across to make a good save. Clutches it out the air and we stay 2-1 down. So we made a couple of changes. Rubinho and Julian Draxler coming on for Kazuki Honda and Stefan El Sharawi. Really making some uh, some attacking intent there. But they weren't able to make any sort of difference whatsoever. We couldn't create a single chance after that. And we lose our first game in Serie A. Really disappointing stuff. But we haven't got time to dwell on our mistakes. Because we've got another game thick and fast right after that one at home against Atalanta. We're having to play a rotation side in this one because the fixture congestion is really starting to kill me off already in this season. It seems to be a, a problem with all career modes at the minute on uh, on Xbox or just with FIFA in general. Hopefully, they'll get that sort of thing fixed for FIFA 15, although, to be honest, I don't have that much faith in EA when it comes to that sort of thing. And early goals are going to kill us off here. At Atalanta really starting on the front foot. We found ourselves 1-0 up in the early game against Sampdoria. And this time, I'm going to show you the replay. Because what's Begovic's positioning? As the ball gets played through, the second replay actually shows it a little bit better. He charges towards his near post, leaving all of the goal on the other side of him for the attacker to aim at. Look at all of that uh, all of that goal mouth he's got to aim at. Really disappointed with Asmir Begovic there. I think that's a mistake from the goalkeeper. And uh, unfortunately, we found ourselves 1-0 down. And Alexander Lacazette gets in behind here. And it's a great save from the goalkeeper. And the defender is on hand to uh, to hook it clear before it trickles over the goal line. And we aren't able to get ourselves back in it. But Nigel de Jong into the starting lineup for the first time since, uh, since he's come back from an injury that he picked up during pre-season. That saw him out for four months. And he's involved. Out wide to Kevin Constant, whips the ball in, and a fantastic finish this time from Alexander Lacazette. Nothing the goalkeeper, the goalkeeper, nothing the goalkeeper can do about that one, and we back in the game at 1-1. We will see a couple of replays of that because that's not the first overhead kick we've had this season. Mario Balotelli scored one earlier in the year and uh, Giovanni Dos Santos picked one up as well. He's been superb for us 
this year and uh, all round the team's been playing pretty well but so far this episode we haven't been putting in the performances that we know the team can put in and a uh, little bit of a defensive mix up there Adam Yates just kind of ignores the ball a little bit a lucky deflection finds its way back to the attacker first uh, first time snapshot well saved by Begovic but unfortunately straight to the man at the back post who volleys it into the back of the net and we find ourselves behind yet again it's 2-1 to Atalanta but Lacazette is involved yet again lovely uh, scoop turnaround one and the finish holding off two defenders Defenders. Alexander Lacazette picking up the baton from Mario Balotelli in the previous episode and a brace for him this time as opposed to Mario's hat-trick yesterday and uh, we get ourselves back in it at 2-2 and we're going to try and catch him on the counter-attack here but the referee calls it back because Kevin Constant's gone down and unfortunately as you'll be able to see on your screen he's actually picked up a broken ankle now that's actually going to seem out for three months worth of action and we did bring in Marcel Janssen during the transfer window which is just as well because DDAC or DDAC isn't quite as good as uh, we might like him to be as a rotation player but he is going to see some football now because Marcel Janssen will find himself in that rotation spot that Kevin Constant was filling and uh, unfortunately we're going to be missing our, uh, our left back for quite a while. Three months he's going to be out for, so uh, he's probably not going to be back before the January transfer window, but I made a change to try and strengthen us attacking-wise. Rubinho coming on for the, the ever-increasingly tired Julian Draxler, although he has been very good for us this season. However, Atalanta are the ones on the attack here. They get into the box, and it looks as if Martin Caceres has tackled the ball very, very cleanly indeed there, and they actually pick up a, uh, a penalty and I was quite disappointed there until I saw the replay and you'll be able to see it was actually quite poorly timed from Caceres he actually catches the man there with his right foot as you can see catches him on the ankle and it actually only broke free because their man had the shot that cannon back off Caceres' foot before he was able to come away with the ball so after initially being disappointed at the pen I can't really argue having seen a replay the referee made the right decision they step up to take the pen drill it right down the middle and we find ourselves through to 3-2 down with 5 minutes to go and we're going to pick up a corner with just three minutes left trying to get ourselves a draw out of this one if we possibly can Zapata goes up and it cannons back off the crossbar and rather than coming back into play for a tap in it drops onto the roof of the net and we find ourselves losing two games in a row in Serie A this hasn't happened for a long time we're undefeated in all competitions as, well, no, that's a lie, actually. We lost to Ajax, didn't we, last Friday? We were undefeated in the league prior to today's episode, and we found ourselves picking up two defeats from two games. So Genoa really were going to get the brunt of my, uh, my frustration here, and I was going to absolutely fly at them for the entirety the entirety of 90 minutes. We were going to have so many chances in this game. And uh, as you can see, we've dropped to 8th now with those two defeats. And uh, we're starting to lose touch with the teams above us. But we didn't have the best of starts last year. And we're still able to finish strong and come back to finish 2nd in the league. Only 4 points behind Juventus. So, definitely isn't all lost at this particular point of the season. It's still very, very early on, but as you can see, the goalkeeper makes a great save there in the 25th minute. Decent strike from Polly. It's moving away from him, and he gets his fingertips to it to touch it around the post, and we stay at nil-nil. But Tashido is breaking free here. The left back pushing inside, but playing him at left back rather than right back. Abate, as you can see, picking up the ball now has been our starting right back. But Tashido has been progressing well, getting uh, his in-game stats coming up very, very nicely, and he's been progressing well overall as well. He's up to 79 now, I think overall. We all have a squad report at some point in the next couple of days I think before the end of this week just to catch up on uh, on proceedings to see who's coming along well and who isn't as we start this season but we're creating a lot of chances here in the first half alone so you can see we're almost not even at the break yet Kozuki Honda breaks away here lovely strike and again Perrin the goalkeeper who's actually a player that you guys told me to look into during the uh, the preseason proving that uh, perhaps we made a mistake bringing Asmi Vegovic. Of course, he was at fault in the previous game and perhaps Perrin would have been a good uh, good lad to bring in. But oh, Benya strikes the, the kind of the stanchion there. It wasn't really bar or post. It was a mixture of both. And a Honda couldn't capitalise on the far post. And Balotelli went down during that move. And I absolutely panicked when I saw him going down holding his knee. I was just praying that it wasn't any sort of ligament damage whatsoever. Fortunately, it's only a hyperextended knee, and he's only going to be out for about four weeks. So it's still a big chunk of time for him to be out for, but it's not as bad as it potentially could have been. As you saw from uh, the in-game stats there, just before uh, we made that substitution, they hadn't had a single chance on goal at this point. We've been absolutely dominant, having loads. We got so unlucky there, pairing the goalkeeper, Dordles on the ball. Benyat races in, but he falls over the goalkeeper as he makes the challenge, and the ball drops free, and he can't get to it to give us a 1-0 lead. And Genoa attack for the first time in the game here. 
And I, ju I press B there for uh, the defender to just hook the ball clear and or, uh, you know, attack it with his head to try and just head it clear. For some reason, he let the ball bounce and then s tries to slide in to get the ball. Victor Ruiz, he should have just, just cleared it and he didn't. Catches the man. It's a clear penalty. It's a clumsy challenge and uh, not what I wanted him to do whatsoever. But they went down the middle yet again, this time right into the roof of the net. S fantastic penalty, it has to be said. And uh, I dive out of the way for the second time in the episode and we find ourselves 1-0 down after all of our dominance. So onto the L mark, we push. And De Cilio doing the work down the left-hand side. Real determined run from him. Rubinho, lovely scoop turn around the defender. Shots well saved. And De Cilio can't cut the ball back enough. Can't get the angle right to get it inside the post. Hits the side netting. And we find ourselves still 1-0 down. So Abate is coming down the right-hand side this time. Doesn't need any help. He's just going to drive all the way into the box. Scored a good goal in the opening game of, uh, of yesterday's episode. And this time, unfortunately, wasn't quite as accurate with it with his left foot and Perrin is able to clutch it and keep us out yet again with 10 minutes from time now Kazuki Honda plays the ball into Rubinho he's in behind great shot Kazuki Honda surely it's just a case of putting it into the back of the net he beats the keeper and there's a defender back on the cover I swear, in this game, I was absolutely cursed. I could not score until we found ourselves in the 93rd minute for stoppage time. Honda snaps the ball away from the defender and saves my bacon. We don't lose three games in a row because Kozuki Honda keeps going right to the end of the game and grinds us out a point in the 94th minute. We have to rely on stoppage time at the end of stoppage time to get ourselves a point out of this one. It's a particularly disappointing episode. It's the first one that we've been this bad in for the entire season. And as you can see from the stats, 17 shots, 15 on target, one goal. I don't I just I don't know what was going on in this game. I swear I'm cursed when it comes to uh, some games like this perhaps. It's just a one off. Maybe we'll uh, you know put in some uh, some better performances for tomorrow's episode. We'll have to wait and see. But as you can see confirmation Ballo's going to be out for 4 weeks. We're still 7th in the league although there's a couple of teams behind us with games in hand but they can't catch us. But uh, a couple of teams ahead of us that uh, still have the chance to uh, to grab 3 points before they reach the 11 goal game. The 11 goal game, the 11 game target that we've hit already. And as you can see, Juve played 11, won 11, scored 33, conceded 5. Ridiculous so far from Juve. We find ourselves a full 14 points off the top already. But, like I said last year, we struggled to get off the mark and we finished very, very strong. So I am confident that we can continue to put some good performances in, grind ourselves back up that league table and challenge for the title yet again. But that's going to bring today's episode to a close, guys. Please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind. There'll be a My Player episode tonight because, of course, it is Tuesday. There was a World Cup sticker book episode last night and of course my player as well if you missed it and uh, feel free to check the channel page if you missed anything else uh, of course links to yesterday's video on screen on the right hand side feel free to subscribe as well if you haven't already there'll be a link as an annotation on screen on the left there's of course the normal subscribe button and the link in the description not only to subscribe but to follow me over on twitter as well i'm closing in on 800 followers over there so feel free to join the twitter party if you so wish but that's all for today guys thank you very much for watching leave a like if you could be so kind and i will see you next time time.